Is this one recording? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, my name is Brent Taylor, and here's the story. It, it's just a God story. It's just this moment where I get to explain this amazing phenomenon called life. My mom was 13 years old when she had me, and she gave me up for adoption after contemplating if she should board me or not. Do I get rid of the child? Do I not? Do, am I in this place? What do I do? And she gives me to this family. My mom's Mennonite. My dad's black Pentecostal. And they got married a bunch of years ago. They fostered 160 kids over 35 years. So I know what it's like to be given up. I know what it's like to be brought into a home. And I know what it's like to be brought into a home full of kids in foster care. Now, I wasn't a foster kid myself, but I lived with them for years and years. And we got to be brothers and friends and all the other things. And so you saw God move miraculously through these two people. Now, growing up, I struggled with dyslexia, ADD, not being the part, moving a bunch of places, learning how to fit in, and not really succeeding in that moment, just trying to figure out who I was. See, Satan had this plan, and God had a different plan. See, my life was supposed to be filled with diversity. It was supposed to be filled with a bunch of other people, and I can remember running home from school, running away from kids, trying to figure out where I was, because sometimes I was the only black-ish kid in the whole school, and I was dealing with, am I white, am I black, am I this, am I that? Where do I fit, where do I belong? But God was setting me up for what we do now. But not to go there too soon. So you have a white mom, Mennonite, from Russia, first generation Canadian, black underground railroad Pentecostal dad, and they're married. And you gotta figure out in the middle of that where you belong after being adopted and given up and something scars you on the inside, but God wants to move through you, through your parents and through the love that he's giving you, but you really don't understand it. So for years I struggled trying to figure out where I belonged and was that with this person, with that person? How do I come to this place that I'm called and that I'm where he wants me to be? Going through areas in life, like when I'm in fourth grade, a teacher looking at me and saying, Brent, never sing again. Like, just don't. Just mouth the word watermelon. You don't have a great voice. You don't do this. You don't, 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 don't. Kind of spiraled me into a place of being scared. So I couldn't speak in front of people. I failed every speech class. I couldn't sing because I was told how ridiculous my voice was. So I just stopped altogether from like fourth grade at Pheasant Run School to 17 years old. And so it was a struggle. Life was not easy. Again, moving school to school, different foster brothers every day, learning how to love and learning how to be in a place where you didn't even know yourself. But all of that was the making of what God wanted to do today. Fast forward to 17, I had gotten a big fight with my dad, hated him for years because I didn't understand him, he didn't understand me. And so I wanted to kill him and God allowed my life to not do that. I was so angry, I was so hurt. Satan had a plan and he wanted again to get me off track. So I didn't know who I was, I didn't know where I was and now I'm hating the person that loved me and I didn't understand it. Fast forward again, God, we're in this place where God shows me who I am after broken relationships, pastoral hurt, churches hurt, crazy, all these other things. But the one thing I remember was no matter who came into my house, my parents taught me how to love, accept their issues, accept the things that I went through because they're a person. And that went with me day to day to day to day to day to day, trying to figure out how this works. And so through that process and through this moment, it brought me to a place of diversity, love, understanding, understanding that we're all bought with the spirit, we're all bought and adopted with the spirit of adoption through the Father and God. And so that brought me to this place of diversity where at 17 or 18, my mom had a singing contest because she heard me sing in a room once. That opened up a whole bunch of doors to what we get to do now. So worship, ministry, diversity, understanding, and growth. And so God has literally made my life a product of love and of other people pouring in so that we can be a product on a shelf that people can grab and buy into to see the story of Jesus in my life. See, I wasn't always this guy that could sing really well. I wasn't always this guy that was always on top. I was not always like, there's, there's those moments, but it was because of my hurt and my pain. And God kind of, God took all that away. It was a moment of understanding like, this is who you are. This is what I've created you for. And so that fast forward just today. What do we get to do? I get to sing, travel, talk about diversity and unity through worship and through the moments of my family, where no matter what kid came in my home, no matter what happened, no matter where we are, it was all about 
understanding the power and the presence of God in my life. And so now we get to travel to or and sing, and even in this place of the things that are happening in this world, God has strategically put us here to talk about diversity. So we wanna come in and see people move. We wanna come in and see people grow. We wanna bring people together that wanna to move, that wanna be closer to God than anything else. We really wanna move in that place where it is Him and seeing that happen day to day, life to life. So we created this place called Worship City. Worship City is a place where you can come online, go to nights of worship and be a citizen and be loved and accepted. That's the awesome part about what we get to do. That's where we get to move. And so we wanna go to 100 cities this year and impact and move. That's where we wanna bring worship, we wanna bring prayer, we wanna bring understanding, anointing, but God's presence to the cities. And so you've heard some of my story, there's more online, but it's really a lot of greatness, not just pain. And I realized that if my mother would have aborted me, like some of you people who have talked to or people have contemplated abortion, if she would have not given me birth, I wouldn't have been able to impact the millions of people that God's allowed us to impact. This is not a story about me. This is a story about God's grace and God's mercy and God's redemption and God's power and God's authority to love and to set someone into the place and the rhythm that they're supposed to be so that other people can be affected. Now I understand the black white thing. I understand those things. I've gone through things. I've been thrown off slides. I've been hit through the racism thing. I've been run at home after, I've been, I've been ran after and chased home. I've been put in a bad situation by teachers. I've been placed that way by leaders and by people, both black and white on both sides because I'm not sometimes dark enough and sometimes I'm not light enough. And I understand the pain of that, but there is a moment where God transcends all of that and tells you who you are. And the goal of this is to understand identity. Like I said, I was born from a 13-year-old mother, given up for adoption instead of given to abortion into a family that was Mennonite and black Pentecostal that came together. So if we're talking about interdenominational faith, color, biracial stuff, I understand it, that's who I am. And I believe that God through us brings us together and moves us into a different place. And so that's what we'd love to share as we come and sing, as I come and worship, as we come and build, as we come and grow and bring impact. We're just purposed and called.